Hey everybody, it's Mark with Mark's Basement Arcade and EM Champ and all that fun stuff. And I got a special guest star here. Hello. Dave, Dave you know Dave if you watch um, Buffalo Pinball on Fridays at 8 p.m. Got Dave here, we're working on his solar fire. Yep, so Dave Brennan from Buffalo Pinball 8 Central. Uh, it's twitch.tv slash Buffalo Pinball. Also, uh... I am the tech service manager for American Pinball for my day job, so I do a lot of tech videos on American Pinball's um, YouTube page, so if you want to check that out as well, I have a bunch more on there. Um, so last we left off on Solar Fire, I popped out the MPU and driver boards, and that video is now up on... Um, for the for the board repair that is now up on Mark's Basement Arcade YouTube page, yeah. yep, um, where I go through all of the the steps for bulletproofing the boards, going through Vid's guide, um, so detailing that. Uh, there is a piece on there that um, I didn't go through because it's not on the boards. It's on uh, the for the re uh, the bridge rectifiers on the bottom right here, which I just put in so essentially um, it's just adding an inline fuse so you, you just need a couple strips of wire and some spade connectors and then I use uh, I just use my crimping tool to crimp in the, the spade connector and then um, I mounted a uh, just a two fuse block and I'll put in um, 8 amp slow blow fuses the reason for doing this is there isn't any fuse protection on these older Williams games so if one of these bridges were to fail um, it, it the fuses are there to to stop it from burning up uh, your transformer so um, anyway I forgot to bring my label maker but I'll put a label on the side of the cabinet here too there we go. Uh, so anybody that sees this game on the inside of the back box they'll know that that's what that's supposed to be um the other thing that i needed to fix which i did prior to the stream here is this connector um if you recall from the last one it had a couple of um i don't know where i tossed the wires now but it had a, a couple of just jumper wires that were soldered directly onto the board and the reason that the person did that is likely they didn't have the proper tools which would be your crimping tool and then the, the crimp pins for your Molex connectors um, and so people just get by with what they know and they um, you know yeah my my hurricane board had the exact same thing every GI was soldered right directly to the board right and so you know you see that all the time it, they just use some wire that they had from their previous home, you know, home improvement project, and they use some uh, plumber's solder or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> and they, yep. You know, I'll fix this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so don't know, knowing they're actually doing more harm to their board than than good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and so basically now I just have to marry up the two boards with this 40-pin interconnect. So I'm going to set this on the table real quick just to push this on. So okay. just take a second. And line it up. There we go. Yeah, that's like the thing that freaked me out the most about doing that um, uh, Lucky um, 7 was... Mm -hmm smashing those two back together <laughs> because you get the brand new contacts and it's just such a tight fit right and that's it, how it should be and i'm like this is just so tight i feel like i'm gonna crack the board and break a trace or something like that yeah but yeah i understand it needs to be that tight to do its job forever right get that good connection and so there there's also this little shelf 
yeah. that this thing sits on. So I'm lining it up on the shelf. So this MPU, the edge of the card, the MPU, it, it sits on that shelf in between the two. And so that, that way it takes the strain off of this connector. So if you don't get on that shelf, it's just going to be hanging and constantly putting pressure on those pins. And then eventually it'll crack the pins or the solder joints and then you'll, you'll yep. have problems. So, um, yeah, you don't want any more problems. So from here, I'll just grab the screwdriver and I can put these. So, uh, where, where the screws attached, that's the ground plane of the, of the boards and that's why you're you have to attach it otherwise you won't have a good ground connection for all of it yeah I had that with um the sorcerer I did that William the, sorcerer the sound yeah but how it was going wow 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 in a track mode mm -hmm. I'm like I told the guy I said if I can fix it I'll fix it I don't know exactly what I need to do to fix it and when I got into the head, it had like two screws holding the boards on. Mm -hmm. So I just replaced every single screw that, that was missing and tightened them all down. Turned on a machine and it was quiet. It was not a sound it made. Nice. So it was just just think of all, all that grounding issues you have because of only a couple screws. I understand, you know, okay, I dropped a screw, you know, mm -hmm. but go back and put the screw back in you know find it or go to this hardware store and get another screw these boards need to be fully grounded like that right well as i look at it here i think i'm gonna need a, a couple of screws yeah but, but this so game was quiet though remember it was it, it freaked me out it was so quiet it didn't make any noise it was very silent sorry if i'm in the way of the Nope. You gotta get that. So if anybody just this has just joined, um, it's me, Mark, and I'm here with Dave, and we're working on his solar fire. We were gonna um, start another project today, a uh, uh, EM I have that will be at MGC, but we wanted to get this done quick, and then it just took a little bit longer than we, what we were planning. So I'm like, why don't we just finish this on the stream, and if we got time, then we will go to the EM that I have that we'll be working on. Yeah. So these, I'm just putting the connectors back on right now, and um, I did take pictures prior to, which is always a good practice, but um, the connectors have keys, so like a little plug um, in the connector that will make it so uh, that lines up. So I don't really need to reference the pictures unless I ran into a problem. Yeah, these are these are pretty easy. They're because they basically lay right where they need to go. Right. It isn't like that the hurricane I had where I had to take a picture of everyone because there's connectors that are there, but there's spots on the boards that you don't use because it's a generic driver board that is used on a ton of Williams games. Mm -hmm. You don't want to plug a connector into something you're, that isn't supposed to be used. Right. Exactly. Okay, my hand right now. That one, that connector almost looks like it should go up one. That one, yeah. This one? No, the one you just did. This one, yeah. Yeah, so that was one thing I noted last time. So they have uh, all Williams driver boards are nine pin connectors. I know that yeah. from ex experience. And what they did was they had some 10 pin connectors and they just pulled the pin out. Oh. And so, um, so they, it looks like you got it in the wrong spacing. Then. Yes. That's, and that's yeah. what threw me on this board. So they, they, when they were manufacturing these boards, they're like, well, we have these 10 pins here. Yeah. Just pluck out one of the pins. <laughs> And they they just put them in that way, so it, it does throw you off because it looks yeah. like it's supposed to. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like those are all one pin off. <laughs> but yeah. no, yeah, yeah, it does make sense. But yeah, that's kind of goofy how they did that. Mm -hmm. No 
nobody's chatting today. Got some people watching. If anybody wants to ask any questions, feel free to do so. I don't know, is there a football game on today or something? I don't know. I am not a football watcher. Neither am I. I used to be years ago, yeah. but I never really got into it. My friends used to watch all the time, so when I go hang out with them, I'd watch. But not so much anymore. Well, I, after college, I pretty much stopped. Yeah. All right. We should be good to go now. Put everything in. It's all tight. I will need to add some more screws. So um, since I'm missing a couple, what I did was I just put one on each corner of the driver board. So yeah. I'll have to get some more um, that are threaded the same later. Be all back in. Looks like it. I don't think you took anything else out. I got the fuses time. in. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. Cross there's your fingers and. Here's your plug. <laughs> Which one? You just grab the orange one and plug it in. Oh. I usually tie those up. But since the boards weren't out and I knew they weren't out, I didn't have to worry about it. All right. Is everybody crossing their fingers at yep. home? Hey, dipping donuts. <laughs> oh, sounds good so far. Oh, it, so I did put it at capacitor. Oh well, yeah, so it, yeah. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> so yeah, I forgot that's got a charge. Yep. So I did put in that's a super cap, and um, so the game needs to be on for it, it, as long as you turn your games on, like once a month yeah um it will it will charge up the cap and it'll be fine um so you know i it's a really good option because there's nothing to leak yeah so all right no well, that's successful now, what, what board is this this is a system seven I seven okay so and i and i did the um from that video, I yeah. did all the, the, so this is the switch matrix section for the send and receive, so these two here. Um, so putting those uh, zero ohm resistors or jumpers in makes all of your switches respond um, quicker. Yeah. Um, I remember I had a uh, Williams Pharoah, which is one of the, uh, the four upper play field games, and it had drop banks. And yeah. I, I was pulling my hair out, and I was playing this game, and you'd hit the drop targets down, and it, like, did not register the switch, because yeah. it was going faster than what um, what the driver board could handle. Yeah. And so I was like, what the heck? It, it recognizes it sometimes, and yeah. other times not, and that's exactly what it was. So... It, just do yourself a favor and change those out if it's not already done. And um, and then the other thing, as as we go through this, yeah, um, cleaning up those drop target banks and those um, there's like little circuit boards with horseshoe connectors yeah. or um, uh, contacts that will make uh, a world of difference in making mm -hmm. those drop banks move. Yes, yeah. yeah. So far, everything worked on us, Amy, except for that. Um the magnet that was right here. This is the ball. This switch is out of adjustment or something, but that was the only thing that wasn't working properly. The ball moved and everything, but the switch is in the wrong spot. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, that is back up and going. We'll have to, um, you'll have to do some play testing and make sure everything is good. And those displays are beautiful good. for being original. Yeah. They're yeah. just so crisp and they have little. Yeah, it could be a connector. Yeah. So those um, basically, re, you know, going through and reflowing solder yeah. on those header pins, and That's then right. the, doing the the master display board on the back panel yeah. here. Um, so what what I'll do, I'm not we're not going to do it for for this purpose or this stream, but um, it's it's a good idea. Just like I repin this connector here, 
just get a ton of nine pin connector Molex yeah. connectors and um, getting rid of these IDC insulation displacement connectors you're gonna um, get rid of a lot of uh, connectivity problems and it'll further bulletproof your game so yeah no, those IDC connectors are basically you're taking a wire and you're just pushing it like through like a two knives almost and that is what holds the wire in that, that connector and by getting rid of those you're getting to a, a crimp on connector on the end of the wire and then that is plugging into the board like like that. Right. So essentially you have two weak connection points. Yeah. One one is the knife into the the insulation of the connector and then the other is the pin itself inside the connector um, going to the male pin and so that um, you can eliminate a lot of those problems by have you know switching to converting over to Molex and um, I think I showed it on the last yeah. video where you can even get the Trupacon yeah. uh, pins that have more surface contact. Yeah, it's got the three sides instead of the one. Right, and you're gonna you're gonna really bulletproof your game. Yeah. Um, I I hear that all the time where people say like, well, I bought a brand new board and I yeah. popped it in, I'm still having these problems. Did you repin the connectors? Nope. No. Well then, <laughs> they yeah. better get to print yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well yeah, we we'll, got Solar Fire up and running. Awesome. How long does it take that battery to? charge it should probably have a little bit on it now so yeah it, it won't take it doesn't take very long at all to charge up a capacitor so yeah. i think we might have to yeah it's gotta go it needs charging up there we go we might have to you know change some settings and stuff in there yeah um oh we should show them the uh the 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 new the new class. oh yeah so this was where's the where's the current? Here's the original one. You can say why you're replacing that glass. Yeah. So here's the original one. It looks fairly decent from yeah. the front side. You know, it's got nice mirroring. This this actually has a ton of mirroring mirroring on it. But then when you look at the back, it had some flaking and somebody sprayed. You know spray paint gray or black on there to cover up the spots that flaked off and so when you get it behind some some light some of the areas that would normally show yeah light through them don't anymore because they sprayed it with opaque paint and so you're this is basically a, a wall hanger I mean it's yeah. it's okay for what it was it's sad though because that's a beautiful glass right it's just the art on it and everything is just so awesome on it. And so we're very fortunate that Classic Playfield Reproductions makes back glasses. So I got myself a brand new back glass, which they, I guess they can print them on demand now. Yeah. I didn't even know that they had a solar fire. Yeah, they, I mean, they haven't made play fields or plastics. They just have the back glass. Yeah. So oh, that is so beautiful. So brand new. I haven't even take, taken it out of the plastic yet. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah that, that is nice. nice. I think the, I haven't put it side by side, but it looks like all the colors are. Yeah. I was just yeah. looking at it. Yeah. Purple looks a little bit purplier. You know, the glass right there looks a little purplier, but that might be yeah. because of the plastic on it. Yeah. But it, it might have been this way, because, you know, just for, you know, fading from years, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, you're right. It is. So this one's a little bit more pinkish. Yeah. But, you know, I, the way I look at it is, um, yeah, CPR doesn't get the, the colors perfect every single time. But if it's a choice between having a mint one that, yeah. that's crystal clear versus one that's all all flaky, yeah, I'll, I'll take a CPR any day. Yeah, I'll take one that's that's not maybe just spot on over. Yeah, right. So having something like new is better than 
something that's shining a light through it. Right. So, well, we'll clear off this table and we're going to work on the next yeah. project. I think we'll leave solar fire on okay. so that um that it can just charge itself. Sure. That way when we shut it off later and then turn it on, it should go right into a track mode and it won't do all the weird blinky blink blink yep. where we have to flip it on and off. Yep. This way we know that cap will, it's doing its job. So we have another game that I had just picked up yesterday that we will be working on. Oh my god, this thing is a tank. Yeah, you can see that. That just you don't even get the game. You get over because yeah. they painted it. Yeah. You can see it blinking behind it. Yeah, that's true. Yep. They just it's, it's just got over right. going on it. So get this over here. I'm gonna actually flip this camera off and go back to the monitor, the computer cam. Okay. Because otherwise people might get seasick with this one. Yeah. We will have to. Oh, I don't know how we're gonna do this because I can't unplug it either. What do you need? I'm just, we're gonna oh. do this backwards. I'm, I'm on the cords here. Yeah. I'm gonna, normally I have the camera over here, but if I unplug it, I have to shut down OBS and restart OBS. So I'm gonna put the, the camera over on this side and then we're gonna work backwards. Okay. I don't know if we will need light. I don't think we will, because we got this. But yeah, I'm excited that a solar fire is lit up again. Yeah. And we're there for the table. I know you're excited. I that know. was a lot. Of <laughs> yeah, it does that. When you get into the multi ball, it does that. Oh, okay. It well, scared the hell out of me. I'm like, duh, hell. But see how quiet that thing is? Yeah. Yeah, you can't even hear you, it. You well. can hear Baywatch over it. Hmm. Now you don't hear nothing besides Flight 2000. Oh. All right. I need to get the mic on. This game I picked up yesterday from a local owner. It had some problems. He asked me about fixing it. We discussed the price on fixing it. And he just decided... Sell it rather than fix it? Yeah, sell it rather than fix it because this opens up more room in his basement for something newer and that he'll enjoy more. You know, I think that that scenario comes up a lot with yeah. EMs. Um, but you you bought this from a another pinball collector. Yes. So I've I've had this scenario happen a lot with um, with people that aren't really into pinball. They you know they might have one or two games, and they they would come to me and say, well, I want to get this thing fixed up and I kind of give them a quote yeah and then I show them well this is what the thing is worth what do you want to do and if if they don't care about it that much then it's probably yeah. oh well I'd rather have the space in the basement or it's sentimental to me I'll you know I'll get it fixed yeah so you know that's that's always going to be something that you wrestle with I mean I hope that you know people want to bring them back to life yes um but yeah, this this one is a nice looking example. I saw the pictures. Yeah, this the play field. yeah this is a really a nice game. If you guys have ever seen Star Action or Triple Action, that's what this is. This is more. Well, this is obviously a, a four player versus Triple Action and Star Action, but this has so much more on the play field. It's the same play field layout, but there's a ton of more stuff to do on the play field versus. Star action or triple action. But as usual, we're taking that glass out because I am not working on it with the glass in. I've done that once before, 
and drop screws in it. And it's got a minty backlash still. And this was um, the artist yes. signed signed your apron, right? Yes, the apron right. has um, Steve Cordick's signature on it, which I did not know until I got it home. Or in the car, actually. And then I seen it, and I'm like, somebody's got a signature on there. And I sent the picture to Dave and Ryan. And was it Ryan said it was, Steve? Ryan, yeah, Ryan is, so Ryan Kuiper, he streams yeah. with, with me on Buffalo Pinball. He's like uh, a, a dictionary of, <laughs> yes. all, of all of the uh, pinball history and people. Yeah. He's he's really good at that stuff. So Steve Cordick is the game designer, not the... Um, not the artist. Yeah, uh, the game designer. Christ, it's uh, Christian Marchi. He's the pointy is people. The, is he, yes, the he, Mar He's a pointy people so artist. That's, yeah, that's the that's common. Yeah. Um, with with a lot of Williams games where they had the yeah pointy elbows yeah, and stuff, which were cool. Mm -hmm. But this one, we are just gonna basically gut it, tear it apart in pieces. Dave's gonna work on. One. One part, I'm going to work on a part. We're going to tear apart the score rails. We're going to get them apart in pieces. And then we're going to... I'll end up cleaning them up, and then we'll end up putting them back together. So, yeah, I think that's what we'll just end up doing. We'll just... We'll take the score rails apart and chat with people. Are you going to do just one bank at a time? Kind no, of we'll, do, we'll do them all. Tear them all completely apart. I'll have to move this so you got room to... Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I usually do. I just tear them all completely apart. There we go. Sorry about the camera, people, but like I said, I would have to shut down OBS and restart it. I like my other table better for these big heads. Mm. It's just, it's got more room on it on the edges. It'll be alright. You get yourself a bin. I get a bin. And what we'll do is we'll just tear the reels apart down to nothing. And hopefully there's no breaks or in the wires or anything like that. You got some tools over there, don't you? Yep. Okay. I need one for plastics. Actually, we got two bins here anyway, so... I'll probably turn that off <laughs> so we don't get the siren every yeah. time. But, it, but as long as it's... It's, it's probably charged. It, yeah. No way. It shouldn't take very long. No. But these are just typical... Um, this one, yes, it should be for sale. Why is that screen froze? That's the... Your... Twitch. It could be, yeah. Yes, this one probably will be for sale. It's either my Twitch or... Are you guys froze or are we still there? You just have to refresh. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. Because mm. this is on Wi-Fi. Yeah, we're froze. No, we're not. Oh, so it weird. was mine. Yes, this one may be for sale. I don't know. Oh, look at this. Look at this cake die in Greece. Ah. <laughs> wow. Oh, I, let me um change the camera. <laughs> we will do two cameras. So you can still kind of see us. Yeah. Where is the Greece? Oh, uh, I have to... I have to move that down. down. I forgot. Um, My thing takes a little bit of the screen away. This is, this is like extreme Greece. <laughs> right there. On the, uh, so this is the... Ugh. <laughs> Look at that. So that's not going to have very good contact. <laughs> no. Yeah, there's a good glop on there. I wonder what, where that, they just got sloppy with. Yeah, like, there's grease on there too. Yeah, that's what it was. This is like a finger smudge. So somebody yeah. got sloppy with applying. So. Yeah. It happens. I see these things all the time and. People just, they tear them apart and they do their little... I'm going to follow your lead and how far you want me to break these down. Oh, we're breaking them down. <laughs> we're breaking them down all the way. 
that's the only way I can get a reliable rebuild on them. I like, I like the way that you rebuild score reels. I, I haven't I've seen taken them down as far as you do. Yeah. Like what I'll typically do is kind of do a surface clean and, um, you know, clean up the the reel itself. Yeah. Um, you know, if it was super dirty, I, I could take this, the, um, the reel off, but I don't typically. Yeah, just throw it, put all the, we'll put all the metal in, in one. Oh, okay. And then we'll put all the plastic in other, because other plastic, except for the reels, all the plastic parts for this will go in an ultrasonic cleaner, and the reels I'll end up hand polishing. And those will get all done by, yeah, you can see, it's just nice and dirty. So those will get all clean. Yeah, my laptop froze. It wasn't Twitch, it was my laptop. My laptop is on Wi-Fi. My computer is hardwired, so my laptop, it probably was doing a, a factory update, and it decided to freeze. These. And you put all these in the ultrasonic cleaner? Yep. What uh, what size do you have, do you know? I have that little Harbor Freight one. Where do you want these at? Um, I'll just start throwing them over here. Where? Over here. Oh, okay. Actually... Yeah, it's kind of small. I should have boxes. I got boxes everywhere. I'll just, yeah, we'll just stack them over there, I guess. I'll just do this. Yeah, I got that um little Harbor Freight one. And um I just use that for everything. Yeah, we're taking these off too. Do you want a little screwdriver? I think I got one. Well do a one? Yeah. Um, taking these clips off. The mat and all the plastic. We'll go in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just able to do it. Here we go. And then these want to come out here. See, I would I would take pictures of all of this stuff. But you've probably done it enough times. I've done it enough where I don't have to anymore. But steppers I still do. Okay. Because they sometimes they just confuse me because I've done so many different ones. Mm-hmm. So steppers I don't mess with in this little yeah. yeah steppers will all get pictures taken yeah there's a lot of grease in there you can see yeah can you see on mine this plate is just dirty it's got old grease on it now there, there should be a little bit of grease on here but this is just old grease right and it's not probably not synthetic so no. it it cakes up it cakes up and then it just causes issues with um scoring or resetting uh yeah um yeah there was one remember that bowler that you came and looked at yeah that was like a united right yeah, yeah that was a united and, bowler and they were they're notorious for like every single score reel is just caked up yeah and so it's tedious yeah. <laughs> yeah, to go through and clean all those things. But once you redo it and you put in, um, you know, the more modern synthetic, yeah, it's going to last a lot longer. This is why um, four player games, I charge more to rebuild that whole thing. Oh, they even greased yeah. the plunger. So yeah. that that's not... Where, where are we at? Right here. Ooh. That's yeah. not good. Yeah. So some people, uh, they think they're doing well, but this, oh, that is just caked. Yeah. So that all that's going to do is just gum up and everything's going to be sluggish. So, yeah, this absolutely needs to be completely And this is part. This was a working game, too. Ugh. There's um, <laughs> towels there, courtesy oh. of Dippin' Donuts. Dippin' Donuts is... They gave me a whole bunch of these cool towels. You want to grab me one too? Because I'm going to need it. 
I got these. Look at that. She gave me a, a whole, that whole big stack over there by Flight mm -hmm. 2000. Oh, nice. Yeah. Gave me a whole bunch of them when I dropped off her game. So, a little, yeah, a little clip for that. I think I have another. Oh, I swear they do. You do? Yeah. I believe I do. If not, I think I have a, like a dental tool. Here. I keep it over there in case I get in any weird stuff. So you can use this okay. this baby one too. Thanks. So yeah, when I dropped off her Lucky Seven, they gave me a big gift of a bunch of towels. Yep, that's this perfect. Is fast as far as we're going, right? Yeah, that's as far as we're going. And, and then, then when when I go later on, I'll go around through all the coils, pull them apart. Now, do you have itty bitty um, coil sleeves yep. too? Yeah. Okay. Cause like, uh, I didn't know you can. I mean, you can cut them just like I guess. Yeah, I, um, but that would take. A while. Oh, oh, oh! We got a broke wire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? I got um. It was just cold, cold solder on this, so this, uh, the power wire, just bro broke right off. Yeah. So it was just. Which is good. I would rather have it now. You know what I mean? Right. Then, like where I bring it to MGC and it vibrates off or whatever. So that's why it's good on these EMs just to go through and grab all these wires. Right. Well, and this, well, what will you do? Because um, you could ultrasound it, clean this too. I will eventually pull this plate off. Uh -huh. I'll take the screw off and then I'll clean this whole plate. And if I'm really, these are really dirty, I will throw that whole plate in there okay. and disassemble the whole thing. Okay. But what, this plate isn't that bad, so when I take the coil off, I'll go through and clean it. I'll take that screw off, and then I'll clean that, and then put it back together. Will you ultrasonic the um, the switch stacks? No. 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 Okay. Those I just, I'll go through with that little Dremel that you gave me. If they're greasy, then I'll wipe them down real good with alcohol or naphtha to get all that junk out of there. What, and... One thing that I do, I have I actually have two ultrasonic cleaners. One yeah. is a, a smaller one. Yeah. And so when I'm shopping out a game, I will drop the the switches like through. So if it's a stand up target or something, yeah. and let it dangle from the play field. Oh, okay. So rather than, um, so what I would the lazy me would do, is I I would have this and I I probably I take I get all these disassembled like this. Yeah. Hey Jeremy. And, and then I would. Um, hey, what's going on, Jeremy? And then I would set the ultrasonic cleaner in here and oh, just dunk, dunk, yeah. dunk. Okay. <laughs> so that, um, it's kind of a nice little tool. So when I, when I was shopping out the, the Swords of Fury, the yeah. last game, um, I would have the play field up and then I would take the ultrasonic cleaner and I just go, whoosh, Okay. And, you know, because it, it's kind of, it's it's not that big. You know, yeah. It's enough to put a, a few switches in and like gonna, a coil or you're something. You're going to have to send me a picture of that because that, that sounds interesting. If I can just take this. And they're cheap. They're yeah. cheap. I mean, it, it's like a look, probably, a, I don't know, a quarter or two. Yeah, because once I, I take all these out, this whole thing will be loose enough where I can actually bend it up and drop it into a cleaner. Yeah, and I, I think the, it what it will as you know, it'll, it'll probably yes. take off your labels. Yeah. I have tossed in, um, you can toss in yeah. whole coils. What it'll probably do is it might um, get the the labeling off of it. Yeah. You did make me buy one. Huh? This is a little label maker. Oh, nice. Yeah. Ah. So, yeah, I did up, end up buying one. Nice. I'm like, I got to get one now. Well. After when you were over here with the... Yeah. A straight flush. Oh, well, because the labels come off all the time. Yeah, so like I labeled all my little... <laughs> perfect. Yeah. So it, that's perfect for that. So then you know... Yeah. And, and it's it's kind of... I mean, they're they're in the wiring harness, so you're not going to mess them up. Yeah. But, um, it, and then when it'll look like brand spanking new. If you made all new labels for this yeah. and this was like super shiny. Yeah. I mean, that's probably... That's that's way overkill, but our friend Nick Shell would very much appreciate. Oh that. yeah. 
if you if you don't know Nick Shell, he is the curator for the Roanoke Pinball Museum in Roanoke, Virginia, and he is one of the guys that taught me um, how to work on EMs, and he's just a wealth of knowledge. But he is he really loves to go through and shine everything up with uh, like all these little yeah. uh, circuit boards and everything. It just it looks super nice when it's done. It, it's not necessary to to shine up all the little traces and no. everything, but it does look cool. It so. does look cool. <laughs> so Jeremy, how are you doing? And I've I've been watching a lot more of Jeremy's streams lately. He's I know Jeremy's streams are very Inform informational, informative. Yeah, I'm bad with big words. I'm really bad with big words. No, informative is right. Yeah, he's uh, my wife's probably going, like, Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> you said a big word again, but yeah, oh, he streams all kinds of stuff gameplay, repair streams. Yep. Um, uh, so pinball mayhem on YouTube. Um, he's got lots and lots of. Yep. Good resources there. Yeah, him and Ed. Yeah, that's right. Ed's. The, I always tell everybody, Ed is the guy that works on machines that takes quarters. So whatever it is that takes quarters, Ed works on that machine. But Jeremy does a lot of different stuff too. He fixed my cuckoo clock, my wife's um, cuckoo clock. Oh. He re, he rebuilt that for yeah, her. Yeah, he was telling me about that. Yeah, it's still working today. That's awesome. She's the. The only issue that we're having with the clock is somebody doesn't um, pull the chains on it every day to rewind it. Mm. But that's about it. That's the only issue we have with the clock is it's just keeping it winded. Mm. But yeah, it, it cuckoos again. It plays its music. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. My parents had one of those growing up. I wonder what happened to that thing. Yeah. Yeah, no problem, Jeremy. I appreciate it any time. Like, I, I, I've told people before, Jeremy is, like, one of the very first people that I met in um, the pinball world. And I started chatting with him um, because I found out he's in Wisconsin. I'm like, oh, another pinball guy in Wisconsin, and he does, he's on YouTube. So I'm going to see what I can learn from this guy. And Jeremy helped me out a lot with... Um, getting into YouTube myself with um, this, um, making videos and stuff. So I always will thank Jeremy for um, helping me with that, and I appreciate it. And I also did get to meet him eventually later that year or the year after at MGC. Nice. See, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit, I guess, privileged yeah. in that way because my, my sister lives up by Jeremy. Okay. So I visit Stevens Point. Yeah. Fairly often. I was up there for New Year's this uh, a few weeks back. And yeah. So I did go over to Ed Ed um uh, Ed Owens yeah. house and just got to play his ball bowler for the first time. I know you want one now. Oh they're so <laughs> awesome. They're so much fun. Yeah. That I there's I mean there's not I mean I, I have a puck bowler. Yeah. And it's and it's fun. Uh, and it, it works in the space that I have, and I, you know, I'm lucky to have that. But, oops. But once you play a ball bowler and it's got the, the gutters and everything, yeah. It's just, and it, you know, he's got like a 20 foot one. Yeah. It's just so much fun. You get like, I think it's a six player, and so you get six people around this thing just having beers and stuff and and chat and, like everybody understands bowling. But yeah. To have that in your house is just amazing so i that's it's like another life goal i have to set yeah so i'm now i'm thinking like what do i need to do to like maybe i can knock a hole in the basement wall and dig a tunnel yeah and make well, you got that crawl space area <laughs> oh, right so like what am i going to do with yeah that? so yeah uh dent oh one two three um this is the only way to um properly clean a em and get through it and do everything you need to tear all these mechs apart into little pieces and and clean them like this 
like I said, this game was working. It had a little couple hiccups, I think, with the bonus or something like that. But otherwise, it was working. But you can see how dirty it was. And it, it was going to fail eventually. Something was going to eventually just stop working on it. And I can't take a machine like this. And I'm not a flipper, a, a pinball flipper. A flipper is just where you take a machine... They wipe it down. Wipe it down, wax it, put new rubbers on. If there's a bulb burned, burned out, put a new bulb in it. It works, and then sell it. Mm -hmm. I I don't do that. I have to go through every single thing. Degrease, as you can see my hands right now, they're just nasty. Like I said, this machine was working, but I need to take everything apart like that and clean it. It's That's the only way I can... I feel good about like you buying a machine for me and then knowing that this machine is going to work for you for, you know, 10, 15 years with zero issues. Well, I think the, um, which is probably a turn off to people getting into, into pinball as a hobby. Um, you know, EMs can be intimidating. And yeah. I think just because of that, um, I, I guess the one thing I learned from Nick at uh, Nick Show was that um, it, it's it's it can be um, like a Zen type of activity, you know. Yes. If if you can just you know, it's all rinse and repeat. Yes. So it is. these are all the exact same score reels. So as Mark said. He's done this several times. He knows where all the pieces go. That's yeah. why he's not taking any pictures. But once you know how one of them goes together and how it's supposed to work, it's rinse and repeat. Yeah. So then it can be a Zen type thing where you're you're taking it apart, you're cleaning stuff. Yeah, it's going to take some time. But at the end of the day, when you have a squeaky clean game that is perfectly working, yeah. like that is. You know that's something that you're going to be proud of in your collection. It's interesting, player. The the always the the, the highest score reel, the the ten thousand reel, is always like squeaky clean compared to the ten reel. The ten reel is just always super nasty, and um, the ten thousand reel is always usually really clean. As you can see on this one, it's not that dirty, but. If you've seen my um, videos on cleaning them, here's my link. Check it out. Um, I'm actually having a 1,000 subscriber giveaway right now. So go to Mark's Basement Arcade, subscribe. Look for the 1,000 subscriber video. Watch it. Do what it says. And you get a chance at winning some stuff if you are in the continental United States. I'm sorry I can't ship overseas. It's just too much money and patience in dealing with that stuff yeah it is it's just too much i, I send stuff overseas uh more than occasionally and <laughs> i feel bad if yeah. you live in australia and you're into pinball <laughs> you must have to be super rich to to do that uh, to be in the pinball hobby and live in australia but oh, there you go i'll put them both over here I'm like, where are my screwdrivers? I want this one. But yeah, I'm giving away um, shirts, a hoodie. Tools. Tools. Uh, I have a EM scorekeeper. That oh, is, that's cool. That is being donated to me. Wasn't there a guy in Minnesota that yes. did that, right? Yes, Tan Man. He's actually, um, if you go to my YouTube channel and go look at my the channel's link, You'll see awesome channels. Go down there. Dave's got on there, too. Um, go on there and look for, um, I think it's Tanner Walters. And go to his um, YouTube channel. Subscribe, too. Subscribe to Dave's. And everybody that's on there, those are all my awesome channels. And you can see how that EM scorekeeper works. As you know, with an EM, you cannot keep a high score. But this is a little digital display that's you know like about this big and it goes where your um, scorecard goes and it uses extra leaf switches you put on your flippers so you can actually program uh, your high score into it and it will save it 
if, when you shut the machine off and turn it back on, your high score will still be on it. Is there like a battery or something? No, it's um, it's it's like the, the RAM or oh, or like whatever. Oh, RAM. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Cool. And I just lost the clip down. I remember there. seeing that a while back, and and I, I think it's cool to, um, you know. It wasn't super expensive. No, it's um, it's what, like a hundred bucks, I think. Right, but then I started to think, well, you know, because early solid state games are that way too. Yeah. Where you just you see a number, but there's no name by it. This has initials too. Yeah, so that that's the advantage to it, and yeah. so if you, and it, it's it's universal. Yeah. Right. So if you um, say you were done with the game. Uh, kind of like color DMD or something. Yeah. You could eat, and it just goes into the where the scorecard is. Yeah. So instead of having the scorecard that says, uh, you know, uh, 50, 50 cents per play or something, you'd have like a little cutout thing yeah. there, and then your um, if you ended up selling that game, you can just take the thing out and move it over to the next one. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't matter what game you put it in. Yep. That's pretty cool. I'll so, invest in one of those. Yeah, well, you'll have a good game to put it into. Yeah. You have a real nice game. You gotta dig that out yet too. I gotta dig out the back glass. I got. I don't keep the back glass in them. Mm. I keep them. There's a right behind Hurricane over here. There's a little like cabinet door. And I put all my glass in there because I never go in there, so the glass should never get broke. Nice. Yeah, I'm afraid of keeping them in the heads back over there. If somebody bumped it or um, something, you know, I'm going to flip out. Because glass is not cheap, as you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're looking at about 300 bucks for a uh, new back glass, yeah. typically. Yeah. And if CPR doesn't have it, or what's the other one? Shea. Shea. Shea and then BG Resto. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. That's the other one I was going to say. BG Oh, then there's what? May, Mayfair Amusement. They don't make glasses, but Mayfair Amusements has a bunch. Yeah. Um, I thought there was one other one that was making reproductions. They're like from um, the same hardtop people, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, I can't Outside think of Outside Edge? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. They Because they, they were doing mirror, uh, mirrored back glasses. So I think the... Um, the only people that do mirrored that I know of, I think it was CPR and um, this outside edge. Because BG Resto, he do, basically, I have several BG Resto ones. He's out of Michigan. Yeah. And he does a lot of unique glasses, even one-off stuff. Yeah. And um, the, the, the thing with his is he can't do mirrored. Because essentially it's... He would print out um, the art, yeah. and it gets baked onto a piece of glass. Oh, that's how it does. Okay. Yep, and and they're typically darker than what um, an original glass would be, but it's still like, better than right. So junk if, glass. Right. The one that I had was for that um, Zacharia combat. Yeah. And no one, he didn't have it before. The only reason that it's on his website now is because I sent it to him, and in the process of sending it to him, it yeah. broke. Uh, thank God I sealed it before I sent it to him. Yeah. Because when it broke, it didn't break into a million pieces. It it's, broke into it, some, it just, just to a puzzle piece. And he was able to put it back and scan it yeah. and get a scan out of it. And I thought that was just amazing. Yeah. So, so the, um, the stuff I use to, to clean, this is all going to eventually go, you can see how nasty it is. This will go into ultrasonic cleaner. Um, Jeremy, are, are you still here? I, I can't remember exactly what I use in a ultrasonic cleaner, but if Jeremy's still here, um, I took his recipe that he uses. Um, let me go get it. I'll show you. Well, I know what what I use. Yeah. I use um, Purple Power, which you can get at any Walmart. It's a multi-purpose cleaner and approximately 50 50 yeah purple power same thing i use the simple green green hd it's probably the same oh, thing yep yep so yeah basically the same yeah purple power simple green same thing and it's um that that works really well for 
um, getting like all the crud and everything off, and and it's it's dirt cheap. I mean, yeah. you're 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 getting yes, same thing for carburetors. I've done, <laughs> I've yeah. used the ultrasonic cleaner for. Um, I was in. I'm still kind of into motorcycles. I was bigger yeah. into it, but yeah, you you can take an entire carburetor and chuck it in there, and it it they come out like squeaky clean. Yep. It's crazy. There's a show I watch on YouTube called, his name is Musty One, and he's always throwing um, just whole carburetors right in a, ultra, he's got a giant ultrasonic cleaner at all. Oh, yeah. And he'll just mean. throw the whole carburetor right in there. He'll take all the jets out and everything and just throw the body in there. And That's got to take forever to heat up. Yeah. But he uses, um, that, you, you ever see that like one gallon can of carburetor cleaner with the basket? Yes. Yeah, that's what he uses in his. Hmm. I wouldn't want to use that on pinball parts, but hmm. carburetors, yes. But he's got a, a giant cleaner, and it's just full of that. Wow. So, yeah, I use Jeremy's recipe, is, which is, um, you can use, I use that simple, um, the simple green HD, or you can use purple power. I use one gallon. I, I put 20 ounces of um, cleaner in a one-gallon milk container, minus the milk, and then I fill it up with water, and that's what I use. And I just put that in my um, ultrasonic cleaner. The reason why I went with 20 ounces is because it was the easiest thing to measure at the time. Mm. And they, they come out perfect. But you need all this stuff clean. And then one thing about it too is my hands are filthy right now. And if I went and cleaned like all these reels, now I'm putting them back together with dirty hands. So all the reels are just going to be all dirty again. Mm-hmm. I, I do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I get to um, like putting on. Uh, I usually go with uh, white white rubber rings for yeah. for games. And if I'm I'm typically like cleaning metal parts and things. Yep. Like as I go, <laughs> I go and touch these things. Like damn it. Yeah. I get it all over them, and then you have to use like alcohol or whatever yep. to wipe it off. <laughs> but that's a good trick though, using alcohol to wipe off your. White rubbers. rubbers. Mm -hmm. There's another thing that I've seen before. It's called Wildcat. Yeah, I've heard of Wildcat a, before too. It, it kind of smells like diesel fuel. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's like another thing where you can kind of. Uh, yeah. I think it's petroleum based because you know your rubber is a, a mixture of different chemicals. Or yeah. Petroleum, anyway. You. It's it's like a, a friend of mine used it all the time to like kind of touch up uh, any of the dirt and stuff in between uh, shop jobs. So for um, cleaning, this is what I use for cleaning. This is naphtha. It's in a little eye drop bottle, and this is alcohol, um, the ninety one percent, ninety two percent. And what machine is this pulled from? This is a Star Pool. It's like triple, it's the Cadillac of Star Action and Triple Action. This has a, a lot more playfield switches. It's actually got a ball gate on it. It's got like a pool rack on the, the playfield. I don't know exactly how that works. So like I said, I, I the game was turned on. I checked a couple things for work and I knew it needed to be shopped so I wasn't worried about playing it because usually when I get done shopping a machine, everything works with, you know, some little minor tweaks. But yeah, this was a star, but star pool. But the reason why I use this is because a lot of people, they'll take their container and they'll take their rag and they'll go like this and they'll put a little bit on there and they'll wipe stuff off. Now, when you're run out, what do you do again? Just out of your mind, you take the same container and you do that again. You know, you go like this with your rag. What you did was you just took dirt from this rag and put it inside here. So this is going to have dirt in it now. Mm -hmm. So with the eyedropper, I just go like this now. I just take a little bit and I can drop it right on my thing. Close it up. And this is always going to stay uncontaminated. You know, that's uh, I have a similar thing in my tool bag. Not an eyedropper. Yeah, that friend, thing too, right? That's perfect right there. A friend of mine gave, and I don't remember where he got it from, but this 
is essentially it's a syringe. Yeah. Which I suppose you could get one like a, a syringe tip, and you just clip off the uh, the, the the ouchy part. Yeah. <laughs> the the and, just, and this is just flat. Yeah. So I'm, and then it, this is a little just a little squirt bottle. Yeah. Same principle with, with alcohol in yeah, it. Yeah, because you're never gonna contaminate anything. Right. And I I like this because I can control how much gets yeah gets uh, put out. And then I can, like I talked about earlier, because I don't typically um, take it apart this far. Yeah. Like if it's something where I'm just trying to clean things up, I'll take a little bit of the alcohol and put it where I need to, and then just use a you know Q-tip and kind of clean it up that way. So um, nice little thing to keep in your toolbox. It is easy to put them back properly. You just need your phone and your camera. Take pictures. Take a picture first of what it's like. Take a couple, one piece off, take a picture. Take another piece off, take a picture. Take another piece off, take a picture. And by doing that, you are guaranteed to put it back correctly. Because when you, once you get it cleaned, you start from your last picture and just work your way backwards and you'll build your whole score reel or stepper motor back up. Same process if yeah. you're shopping out a game, yep. and um, which is it's vitally important for that. Yes. I think once you've done enough, uh, like Mark has done a ton of these before, you know, you'll start to not need that anymore. But yeah, but for play fields or layouts and everything, they're specific and it's helped to, helpful to have a reference oh where did that post yeah. go or you know oh this is supposed to go on before that yes um like that. this right here this will be able to go into a ultrasound and cleaner all this at one time will be able to go in there but i actually since there's a lot in here and it's they're all nice and greasy i might just do two batches that way i can stir it around a little bit and mess around with it more to get it a little bit cleaner. So I might do that in two batches. The score reels never. What temperature do you run on your ultrasound? I just, my Harbor Freight one I think goes up to, oh, I can't remember how many degrees, but I just, I just leave it on and it doesn't go up that hot. I think 180 degrees maybe. Okay. For mine, mine's uh, metric, so it's in Celsius, but for yeah. reference, I typically run at about 45 C, 45 or 50 C, yeah. um, and that seems to work well for me getting, you know, the crud off and I yeah, don't have it, to scrub. Yeah, it doesn't need to be that hot. It just you get it warm and it just it helps flow the dirt off better. Mm -hmm. But usually I put it on heat, and it on Mac. If there's no like heat setting on it, it just heat is on or off oh okay and it gets up to a certain temperature and it just shut it shuts the heat off mm -hmm. but by the time i'm done cleaning it's not even fully all the way through the heating fully cycle you can stick your hand in there when it's not turned on and you won't burn your hand but it's warm so yeah i don't well my mine gets hot yeah <laughs> yeah i have to, have to do the conversion but like if you um so what I do, like mine has a basket, but they're like kind of bigger holes, so yeah. like the screws will, yeah. would fall through. So I have like a double mesh strainer, yeah. that, like for cooking, and so I'll put little stuff like that in that strainer, and then I'll put it in the in the ultrasonic that way. Yeah, I got a little um rice basket actually. It's for um oh, I can't remember what it's for, but I I do that once in a while. Let me get that actually. So people can see it. Yeah, I think the having something like that, it's just because um, you you really don't want to try to fish in there <laughs> when it's super hot. Um, it, hopefully, the thing that you dropped is a furious metal, and you can you still be able to put a magnet in there and get the little screw out. But otherwise, you just got to wait till it cools off. And oh, well, there you go. Yeah. You can put all your screws on this thing. This is really super fine screen. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, that's 
Mine's probably not as fine as that, but yeah, yeah. it's like a. The like screen a that's on here is here. it. It's like four times smaller than like your screen window. Yeah. It's so yeah, you can you can take your screws and just dump them right on here. But another trick too is if you get like a baby food jar or something like that. Oh. You yeah. can you can put some ultrasonic fluid inside that baby food jar and put all your screws in it and just let that sit, bobbling in that ultrasonic fluid. Yeah. And then that will mason jar. Yeah, it will it will transfer right through the container. Mm -hmm. So you That's can do that tip. too. Tip. Everybody's got a mason jar sitting around. Yeah, exactly. Or like a Pyrex something, anything like that, and it will it will do the job. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised this worked too. These things I've been finding to match. Yeah, they're um. Once that little gear is gone. Your match system is gone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they have that connected to, or maybe I'm thinking of something else, but yeah, that thing is sluggish. Yeah. Um, what was it? I had, I was working on a pro football for a guy. Yeah. And it had a match unit like that. And I remember I had to call Nick because I was, um, I was racking my brain on this thing. And I, because it has two different scoring features on this. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a football themed. And so you get, what is it, six points for a touchdown, right? Yeah. And I would get to a certain point and it would get stuck and it would just go ding, 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 he knew exactly what it was. Yeah. Because I like hit a couple of things. We just did like a FaceTime deal. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, it's, you got to, like, I swear I cleaned, yeah. I cleaned that thing. But it was really just a simple, like, the amount of torque that I had on the, um, the, 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 the spring on there. Yeah, the spring. And it was, it got to a point where it was like the zero position or yep. the nine position, and it would just, it would get stuck there. Yep, and, it would hang right up. Yep. So that's, this is, this goes to your philosophy, Mark, where once you go through a game, you really have to keep it longer and play it several times. Yes. To, to work through any of those final adjustments because. It, you know, that's one thing with, I can tell you for a fact, with, with new manufacturing, you know, they go through and test stuff, and yeah, the switches work or whatever, but it's not real gameplay, yeah. and you don't get the full effect of, like, you know, perfectly adjusting the switch and, yep. the, you know, all those little things that you would, um, that you would kind of pay attention to at home. Yeah, I call it heat cycling. I put all my EM games through a heat cycle, which is where I put the glass on and I turn the machine on and I'll just let it sit and cook itself. Mm. Because the, the EM, it does produce heat. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you play it and with the glass on it, it will trap the heat in the game. And a lot of times after playing it, and if you, you messed with all the switches on it, they will decide to relax mm -hmm. either back how they were or in some weird position they never were in. I just had that with Hurricane the other day, yesterday. It played fine for the, the week, the, this full week since I got it back together. And then one switch decided to open up just a little bit more, and it made one thing not work. Oh, did you answer Pinball Pleasures? Um, do you rinse the parts yes. after? So yes, I'm sorry, I, I missed you. Yes, um, I, I put them in the sink. And I use a little toothbrush, and I just, you know, go through whatever is stuck. But, yeah, I do rinse them off in hot water. The reason why I use hot water is because I then I throw them on to the top of the dryer. There, I put a towel on top of the dryer, and I throw them on top of the dryer. The hot water helps them just dry off even quicker. Mm -hmm. If you use cold water, then you're just using the heat from the water for evaporation. Believe, so yes. Believe it or not, you can put circuit boards in there. I ultrasonic yes. cleaned those solar fire boards. Yeah. And it makes them look sparkly clean. And all of the, um, uh, I obviously do not, 
uh, dunk your relays. So if it has a relay on the board, it's don't dunk you. Don't don't uh, don't dunk the relay in there. Yeah. But everything else, um, it will work great for that, and it cleans up a lot of that solder flux. It makes the board look brand new when done. I so. talked to one guy. He um, sprays them down with um, I think it's Castrol, Castrol Super Clean or something like that. Oh yeah. And it sprays them down with a garden hose. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Sprays them down with a garden hose. But yeah, like Dave says, if they, they're like you got the flipper relay on there. You do not want to get any water in out. So what? Yeah, what I do is I, um, I'll just so like for that driver board that has a relay on there, I'll kind of put it in so it's just up to it, or I'll yeah. hold it there. It doesn't take very long, no. you know, especially if your cleaner's hot. Yeah. Um, you might only need to sit there and hold it for like a minute, and then you turn the board, and then if you really want to, you just take a toothbrush and you can scrub. You know, spot scrub certain yeah. areas. And then when you're done, take it over to the sink. You uh, just run water over it. And then I just, I'll just prop it up um, on a box fan. Yeah. <laughs> and let it, yeah, let it air dry yeah, off. That's overnight. all you need to do. Yeah. Um, you, you can, well, yeah, getting paid by the hour to do this work is, yeah, it would be crazy. That's why I usually. I have a flat fee for machines. If it's, well, usually I'll look at the machine. If it's not hacked real bad, then that's when I start talking about prices. But I with a one-player machine, I have one price. And then when we go to two-player, and then when you go to four players, the, every player goes up. Be, just because of these reels, the score reels take the most time to rebuild. Because... Every score reel is a stepper, so now you're thinking this machine's got 16 more steppers on it. Well, 16, um, about 12, 12 more steppers on it versus a one player. So that's another three, four hours of my time going through all these and cleaning them. Now these reels, this is a whole another thing to clean them. I actually have a, in my tips and trick video, I have a thing about cleaning score reels. I will spray them down with um, um, glass cleaner, non-ammonia glass cleaner. And then I go over them with um, Novus 2, uh, Novus 1, and then I buff them. And they got a, they'll got they have a super shine to them when they're done. They'll look brand spanking new. You know, that you bring up a good point. What I found... Um, I used to work for the company that makes uh, the the most famous glass cleaner. Anyway, yeah. they they make a ammonia free one. Yeah. That actually works better than the original. And if you yeah. have any magic glass or a visa glass or you know those the um, coated ones, the coated ones, yeah. you gotta use the ammonia free stuff on there. So just do yourself a favor and get that. Because it works better than the original. <laughs> yeah. And you're not going to mess up and grab the wrong thing. Yeah. So. Ammonia free people. And it doesn't matter what brand you get either. It's just ammonia free glass cleaner. I use it for all my stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, another thing I've been using too. I've been using Novus One on my glasses. Oh. Mm-hmm. Because my glasses do have um, a little bit of scratching on them. You can't see. But there is a little bit on there. And I, um... How is the machine doing? You can see your mach old machine is now tore apart in pieces. Um, it, like I, I was telling everybody, this machine was fully working. Except for we had, well, you had a, the bonus issue with it or whatever. But all the, the score reels... You know they're they're dirty and everything but it was working and I was telling people even though this machine is working with the amount of dirt that's on the score reels and all the, the plastic pieces as you can see right here all these score reels some of them got traces of oil on them oh yeah this one the the 10 dirt. The 10 that yeah. I just did, it was just cake. Even the yeah. coil plungers, yeah. they were real bad. Like, even though I said this game was working, it would have failed eventually 
with the amount you know of just dirt oil, in there. oil and dirt that's just been accumulated for the years well when you when you got oil and on the plungers yeah that creates was, yeah. coil dust and then it creates coil mud yeah <laughs> and and then it just yeah. it just yeah like this one right here it, it actually has oil on a, a plunger mm -hmm. so that's just been going in and out and over the years this might have not failed for another two or three years yet but like I said, in, in order for me to take it apart and put it back together and then either resell it or keep it in my collection, I need to go through all this and clean it fully again and bring this back to new clean. In or This way, this game is going to last 10, 15 years flawless with no issues. And then all the little screws are out, but as you can see, every score reel has been stripped down to nothing. How you doing over there with your beverage, Mark? Um, I'm good yet. Okay. I got uh, two containers of score reels. But yeah, everything, like I said, when I when I picked it up from you, it all looked beautiful. It all looks great. But yeah, it it just needs a full cleaning. I like I said, I, I can't I can't sell a game like this. I'm not a flipper. I'm a uh, I'm a refurbisher. And for me to have a, a good reputation in the pinball community, I have to do my jobs this way. So when people are, are like, you got a machine from Mark's Basement Arcade, and if they want to resell it, they're like, okay, I know that machine's been fully gone through at one time. Well, and if, if you do, I mean, if you're selling like a, a project, you just, yeah. you just close that, yeah. hey, it's, it, it hasn't gotten the MBA treatment over here. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, just yeah. Dave just got a project for me today, and he knows I haven't touched the machine one little bit. I oh. besides bringing it home. Look at this guy right here. Oh yeah, I uh, got some solder splatter on yeah. the wire. Hopefully that's not a, a yeah. fix. As you can see right here, yeah, this has solder splatter in the wire. This I did a golf stream for the Garcade in Menominee Falls. And he was having intermittent issues with a bunch of stuff. And then he told me to come pick up the game, do my thing. And there was solder splatter all over the wires, mm -hmm. all over everything. Ugh. And when I broke it loose, there, there was like solder here and here. So I, I was wondering if it soaked into the wires enough well, where both of these wires yeah, were eventually braided. yeah were eventually touching. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the whole bottom board was just full of solder splatter and that's i mean that's a good tip too as you're going through um you know yeah. like we talked about earlier just kind of wiggle the connectors like i showed yeah. the one that broke loose on yeah the, yeah on we got this one right bug. here yeah you right here this one it broke when, yep. when you took it apart Yep. so and which was good because now it will it will be fixed right and then you you inspect the uh any of the wires on the switch stack stuff yep. like that so yeah, I gotta find out about that little cleaner from you. I I'm not gonna. Well, maybe I'll have it by next week. For what? The little ultrasonic cleaner. Oh. Mine is small enough probably to bring in here and put on. Yeah. Well, no, I'd have to take this out. Well, if you want to borrow mine and see how it works. I don't, I don't have. I'd have to come over tonight and pick it up. Oh. Because oh. I wanna. I wanna get the score reels assembled next week. Mm. I could work on that too. Mm. That one I just got the all the what do you call it built, and I did a little bit on that. That's why you can see all the wiring hanging out of there. Mm. I got one problem with one switch on it. I was trying to diagnose, but I have to put it together to finish diagnosing it. Oh yeah, Mark's pointing to the um, wildfire. Wildfire. Yeah, yeah I got um in solenoid test everything fires, but then one. Slingshot will not switch if you hit the switches. Oh, I know what that is. It's a diode on your driver board. Diode on the driver board? Mm hmm I had that same problem with Stargazer, the the, the one that I sold. Yeah. And uh, the guy was coming to pick it up in, like, <laughs> yeah. the next week. Yeah. And uh, I was like, it, wor it worked a couple of times, and then it would just stop. Yeah. I was like, what is going on with this thing? Yeah. And... and I just did a little bit of googling around. It's like the like the coil works, the yeah. switch works. It's it's doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Why is this thing 
So there was just a, it was just a diode on the driver board. Yeah, that's all it was. And that, that's the same. Stuff yeah, so as you that. find you find the transistor that drives the the, the solenoid for yeah. the for the slingshot, and I uh, just do a diode test. Um, yeah. Black lead on the banded side, red on the non banded side. Yeah. You should get numbers. You flip the two, and, and you should get be, no numbers. Right, and. Um, you get numbers both ways, then you... Yep, then yeah. it's shorted. That's so, what it was with Flight 2000. It was yep. a di one diode, or it was either the diode or the cap. Because mm -hmm. it, it was constantly doing the ball search in up in the, the lock up there. One just kept firing, it, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't let the machine get into the last loop. So what's next on this? What's next on it is probably going to be next week. Okay. Because we're at 320 right now. Okay. If I tear apart any more. Well, yeah. So yeah. really, it's it's. We got far today because this is what I would have just did, in the normal two hours I did. But we got your solar fire, fired back up and running. Yeah. So well, good not that. not fully playing because we'll have to play it after yeah. after the stream and make sure it's all working. Oh yeah. But on on this, I think, um, it would be cool to try the the ultrasonic dip. Yeah. And set it. Since you have it flat on the table here, yeah. it's a good, I mean, you if your ultrasonic is small enough, you really yeah. could kind of set it there and yeah, then you could my, like... It's like this big. Yeah. So uh, the one I have would fit perfectly in this little spot. Yeah. And then you could just go dunk, yeah. dunk, <laughs> if you wanted to do that. But, yeah. uh, I'm probably going to have to lay this underneath the switches and then squirt them down. To get them clean with a little toothbrush, but yeah, I gotta take the coils apart and everything. But I mean, doing um, doing an individual um, is, I mean, because you you still are gonna have to take this off um, and get put a new sleeve in anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, is it gonna save you that much more time? I mean, it'll break down the grease and stuff, yeah. but. So yeah, Wind Raider, yeah, it, it. I believe this does have 40 years of crud on it. You know, whatever, you know, what you did to it, but I know you haven't tore apart all the square reels like I just did. So yeah, I, every one of these coils, um, sleeves that are in there are just fully caked and dirty, and they just need to be replaced. On the surface, I mean, it looks super clean. Yeah. So... It's I, just it's just when you take everything apart, right, it's dirty. You, right. But some of these here. mechs are like this is clean. I won't have to do much on that at all. Yeah. You know that's real clean. Yeah, There's little, another stepper underneath. A uh, little too much grease on there for my yeah. liking, but yeah, it's, it's uh. Yeah, what I do with grease is I I put my grease on and then I go around in a circle mm. with my towel and I wipe almost all of it off. What uh, what type of grease do you use? I use uh, the super lube. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the it's synthetic. Wondering, very you know, it's, and it's spare. That tube yeah. will last you a lifetime. <laughs> I bought this in 2018 or 2019. Yeah, this tube. And you can get that and this pretty is, much anywhere. And this is probably half full yet. And one, this is another one I used too. Yes, uh, right here. The super lube in the pen. Oh, nice. This is another one I use. Um, I'll show the one that, that I... Dad, I, I still need to get some of that. Well, I so you can get this at um, a local bike shop is where I got... This is a travel size. Let me um, get that. I'll bring it back up. But essentially, it's fin finish line... There you go. Finish line dry oh, there you bar go. bike lubricant. And I really like this. This is a really teeny one for my... Um, my parts bag here that they make a bigger size but I mean this is going to last quite a while and you can put this on like a little yeah. put it on your two um, it's got like a little spout too and it's it's more liquidy than yeah. than the super lube um, but you said that dries though yeah and it, it's and it's nice because you can kind of like focus where it needs to go and I use this on spinners that's really cool yeah um, I just made a, a spinner video where um, you put it like on the arms of the spinner mech, and so that works really well. I happily stole this from uh, the folks at 
Madison pinball. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I mean, a good product's a good product. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that's that's a great lubricant. So yeah, you just clean up. Yeah, we went over yesterday. You, you told me you you clean a couple of those things, but yeah, for for me to do a EM, a lot of people they were like, "Well, can you come repair my EM?" I'm like, "Okay, Not I don't. In the home. I, I don't will ever do that again." Yeah, I don't like repairing EMs. I like re refurbishing them. The reason why this game has probably never been touched in forty years, so. For me to, like, fix the score reels, chances are there's going to be some other problem later on. Just because everything's dirty, old adjustment, needing cleaning. Mm -hmm. For for me, it's just by the time you end up paying for me to go through your machine and diagnose the issue and then repair it or replace parts, a little bit of more money and you're going to get your whole machine fully refurbished i wonder what the with the repair techs like uh i know there's a couple in chicago yeah um i wonder how what percentage of them they actually fix on site versus uh taking out of there and it I, it might be i'd have to ask them yeah you know if it's something where they look at it and like i know that this is going to take me more than 10 minutes to fix yeah um, or, you know, an hour to fix, and they they have to make a decision, is this something that I'm just going to, it's better for me to just break it down and take it back, yeah. or take it to the shop, versus fixing it on site, because... Get another uh, one of those tunnels. Here. You a clean one? Oh, well, I was going to use some of the purple power to get my hands. Oh, um, so I was... I... I had to I had to go to uh, Interium, yeah, and in, uh, in Chicago or Schomburg, and <laughs> that is not fun when you, you have low light in like yeah. an arcade or something or in somebody's basement versus you know working in your shop with good light, yeah. you know, on a table and stuff, um, or it. I guess. I would I would much rather and any time that w would ever come up again, especially EMs, I would I'm just gonna default to you either need to bring it to me or I'll have to pick it up. Or yeah, because <laughs> it's just not worth yeah. fixing it in their house. Yeah, I've um I've made a couple house calls for you know some of the machines I've did where they just needed a, a slight adjustment on it or anything, but um and then I just did a a Rudy. A fun house. I pulled Rudy's head off, brought it home, rebuilt it, and then brought it back and stuck it in there. But it's it was easy to do. It was two screws for his um, the plastic to take off his head, and then I think it was eight screws underneath, and you unplugged a couple things, and I so just, that I knew was going to be an easy job. So I just did that. I just saw a pin side thread where a guy uh, like recreate 3D recreated the head. Yeah. He got like in trouble with planetary or Oh yeah. I'm sure if you messaged the guy and you had a three D printer, he's like, Well I didn't I didn't buy it. Yeah. It's like <laughs> printed it out myself. So yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome the stuff that they can remake with three yeah. D printers. There we go. Now we got clean hands. Look at that. But yeah. Yeah, this will get its um the usual Mark Space Arcade treatment. I'll go through everything. Um, the credit unit, I'll probably put a jumper on it so it's stuck on free play forever. Oh. Because I don't know. I can't, can't remember if there was a credit. Um, there's one one thing, I'll and I'll have to show you this to you. And You can for, pull one wire off and just move. This one? Oh, yeah, this one has. No. Uh, this date date got it twisted right here, see? Well, there's one thing that I'll, I did on, on a few of my games, and I really, really it like this. Yeah. I, I happily stole it from an operator, the yeah. game that I bought, a Sonic game. Anyway... What they did was they just took um, a connector, a Molex connector, yeah. and they just took a um, four little pieces of wire, and instead of like permanently bridging it, yeah, you just do a Molex plug, and so plugged in, and I put a label around it, free yeah. play. Yeah. If you don't want it free play, you unplug it, mm. and so that's a really nice feature where 
um, instead of it being permanent. Yeah. You know, like, so I want this to be on location or I want it to take quarters. Yeah. You just unplug it and you're off and going. Yeah, when I, when I put the jumpers on it, I usually put a really odd color wire that sticks out like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. And I just make like a, a loop. Mm -hmm. And then I tell them if they don't want free play anymore, just cut it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that'll work too. Yeah. But yeah, yours, you can constantly go back and forward. Once you cut mine, you're putting another jumper on it again. Right, right. Yeah. So it's it takes a little bit more. Um, but I, I mean, yeah. I, I liked... The, yeah. As soon as I saw that, I thought, oh, that is a super clean look. And, oh, yeah. Um, so I, I've been doing that on, on a lot of EMs now. Yeah, most people that I, I have, they just want it, um, what do you call Always it? Always free play. play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's... One, one, I, one guy did want it left on quarters. He's like, nope, they're putting quarters in it. Some people do. I, yeah. Ed at... Uh, uh, yeah, he's Pinball he, Mayhem, yeah, he's got tokens. He he converted like all of his games in his game room, and he has specific uh, tokens for his, they're custom made for his game room. And I thought that yeah. was super cool. I mean, he's got a token machine and yeah. everything, and um, real really fun like layout. I loved. I yes, loved I did see the, the clear Rudy eyes. There's what they got several different. Versions, I think they're going to do of the the Rudy eyes. Um, yes, I I have seen pictures of that EM. I don't know where it was, but it's a it's a fully clear cabinet and everything. You can see all the steppers and you can see oh, all the relays. So that was a guy in Texas did that. Yeah. Um, and he's actually done. So I actually bought wiring harnesses for my Stargazer from him. Yeah. Um, and I think I shared the back box. Um, light panel with him as well. Yeah. So if there's, if somebody has a back box light panel, that originally came from me for mm. Stargazer. Um, anyway, so uh, it's uh, Third Coast Pinball is the name of the the uh, the company that that did that. Yeah. And they do fantastic work with wiring harnesses and, um, but yeah, absolutely check them out if you're restoring a. Early Bally or Stern, they have some some cool products there. Is that uh, is that about it? Yeah, it's probably. You. So I think uh, can I plug Buffalo real quick. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. You so can plug you can... plug all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so Fridays at eight central. Um, you can find me and Ryan Cart. Kuiper on Buffalo Pinball um, Twitch channel, and uh, this Friday, hopefully, this will be my first, uh, so the dynamic duo has always been Ryan's like the the host, yeah, and I'm like the tech guy, yeah, and so um, I, have, I have a lot of games in my collection, and so... Um, it, we t sort of teamed up, and so it's we stream at my house a lot of times, and so I make sure that the games are all working. But I, I haven't really been a host or taken the reins of yeah. the, the Twitch piece, and so um, I got things set up. So hopefully, uh, if if everything works, hooked up, we're gonna do a test on that, and um, I I should be hosting my first uh, stream of that so no have, ryan no he's he's got some family thing yeah. going on and um but it's okay i need to yeah need he needs to, to take a break once in a while yeah, yeah. <laughs> he hasn't taken a break in a while i know and then i think uh and i have three new games yeah to go i just finished swords of fury i just finished uh scratch built stargazer so yeah. that's brand it's a brand new game no serial numbers nothing on it yeah and then i have um pinball brothers alien so all three of those need to get streamed um and then um uh, uh, i think i'll probably stream uh or record uh yeah. another game from the project pile so yeah uh so buffalo and then uh i also do a lot of um, YouTube videos for American Pinball, which is my day job. I'm the tech service manager for 
American. So if you were to call the service line for that, I'm the guy that picks up the phone and I'm the one that answers the emails. So if you if you have an American game and you need some help, I'm the person that you would call. Um, that's pretty much <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. So um, Midwest Gaming Classic, April 29th through May 1st. Be there. I'll be there. Dave's probably going to be there. I'll be there. Yeah. Um, I can't believe it's coming around. It's like it just we, happened. It, it just happened. <laughs> well, we're going back to the regular schedule now. Oh, yeah. So it, it's, it that, is one wanted, of my favorite shows. They That's, wanted to get that in as soon as they could, so they did it right away, and now we're going back to our schedule. So after this one, you got to wait a whole another year, unless they do game nights. I need to ask Dan if they're going to do game nights again, yeah. which, which was kind of cool. Game nights was a very intimate little Midwest gaming classic. It didn't have all the... In Brookfield, right? Yeah, the Brookfield Sheridan. If you've ever been to Brookfield Sheridan... That was the original, yeah. the OG location. Except it was in just one banquet room. Mm-hmm. Everything was in one banquet room, and oh. then they had a couple little things outside. I so miss the like, Sheridan. There was like only 100 people there. I miss the Sheridan. I think I want to try to go to that. That uh, It was like a lock-in. Basically. Yeah, it was a lock-in. That That's that what scared a lot of people, because they were like, I don't want to be locked in for no, two it's, days. If you, but it, that was just the name. Well, it, you could come and go as yeah, much as you wanted. Yeah, kid growing up, it's like we had these YMCA lock-ins. Right? Yeah. And it was just a fun game night where you, you're not... Maybe, yeah. maybe people got confused, but you're yeah. not locked in. Yeah. It was, you were there, and you were all night kind mm-hmm. of thing. So, I, I think that would be fun. It, there's There's... That charm, I think, was lost a bit when they yeah. moved from the Sheridan to the um, the, the Wisconsin, Wisconsin Center. Center. Yeah, but I will say that MGC is still one of the best shows out there because of the variety. It's not a pinball show. No, nope. it's a gaming show. That's that's exactly Everything. what I say. Everything. Yes, and so if you're not super into pinball. Or if you want to explore other things, so for me, I'm I'm super into pinball, so it's, yeah. I'll I'll be in that area for the majority of the time. But when I want to go and sit and play a console game, or go check out a board game, or whatever, yep. there's everything's there, and it's it's very approachable. That's the other nice thing yeah. that Wisconsin Center has over the Sheridan. Where it's less intimidating to go into the different rooms and check out those um, those different events yeah. that are going on, versus I think at the Sheridan they had like they converted some hotel rooms that were on the ground level floor. It was a little bit intimidating to go in to like whatever the retro thing yeah. was um, or whatever. Yeah, um, I've never been to the Sheridan except for game nights, and okay. that was kind of like my room, just with pinball machines and some console games and a ski ball and a stage, and then outside they had some board slash card game and then some other pinballs. Yeah, so it was yeah, it was very s- small, but it was meant to be intimate like that. Well, and I I just love how um, the the show is truly put on by collectors it's, yes it's uh they're bringing out their their pride and joy their their show pieces the things that they are most proud of that they restored in their basements just like this yeah and they bring it to the show to show off and i remember that they they used to have and i'm not sure if they still do it but um like bring out your rarest game they do they do awards for oh yeah they still do the awards yeah and you have like the, you know, best homebrew, yep. best um, classic, DMD, yep. EM, and people vote on them. I think that's really super cool. Yep. So, so yeah, you can bring your game there and, and get a cool trophy for it. Yeah, I so. think uh, American won one. Yeah. The best best modern Legends of Valhalla got that. I don't know how. Yeah. <laughs> it was we a were, great we game were, though. Well, yeah, we've been we were up against. Uh, it was Godzilla, Godzilla, Cactus Canyon. Yeah. Um, what was the Spookies games? Halloween oh, and yeah, Ultraman. Oh yeah, it would have been Halloween and Ultraman. I don't think you could count. Um, 
Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses, because that's been out a while. Yeah, that's been out. I don't um, know if it falls in this year's or last year's. Well, it was this year. No, yeah. no, no, wait. No, that came out like the same time as Hot Wheels, I think. Okay. So it would have been last year. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, trying Just, to think, you was there anybody else that was new? What else was new? You got Cactus, Valhalla, well, Spookies, Godzilla. Unless Multimorphic did, uh, well, it, yeah, it was just a, it, it wasn't a new module. It was a Sorcerer's Apprentice, but it was an existing module. Yeah. But yeah, that was pretty much it, so that was cool. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, so everybody, yeah, stop by there. Um, I got my links here. I'll put, put it up again. Mark's Basement Arcade. Um, you can go to that. Subscribe and then go to my 1,000 subscribers giveaway, and you can get a win a chance to win at some really cool stuff that I have: some tools, some wax, um, shirts, hoodie, EM scorekeeper. Um, I plus, I, I got a ton of videos. If you liked what you've seen here and you want to learn more, watch my videos because I will have a camera propped up closer so you can see what I'm doing instead of just both of us you will actually see me just do one score wheel from start to finish how i clean it put it back together so if you need any help with that you can get that and i have williams bally gottlieb um not a lot of bally i need to get more bally but it will show you how to tear down basically everything step by step and then put it back together and adjust it properly so Check that out. You know, you should talk to that EM scorekeeper guy. I yeah. see if you can get like a some kind of deal going for advertising and that because yeah. I think that's gonna be that's that's gonna be yeah. your hot. Everybody's well, gonna want that. I, I did get <laughs> get one from him. I have one. I just I need to put one in. I think I think I'm gonna put one in this. Yeah, I think it would be a cool video I'm, to show installing one yeah. and then like. Uh, that's why I bought it. I, yeah. I just been swamped with everything else. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I think that would be a, a fun thing, and then, like, periodically you could do... Yeah. Because uh, that is just a fantastic product. I yeah. think... I can't believe no one's ever thought of that before. I know. It's fantastic. And it's just... It's it's a, a harmless mod. The only thing you really need to do is... Your, if you use the connectors he has, you have to... They're like scotch locks where you, you squeeze them in and they bite into the wires um, to your transformer for the power, but... If you know how to solder, you can just take the wires and just, you know, solder oh, right on the tin, yeah, into the lug, and you don't have to bite into the wires. So if right. you know how to solder, you don't need to, it's 100% reversible where it doesn't get into anything. But that mod He's is... just making it plug and play. Yeah, he just, yeah, yeah for the do-it-yourselfer that doesn't really know... If you have an oh, EM, you know how to solder. You yeah, should. You should, you, <laughs> you should, should yes. <laughs> yes, you should. But yet there are a lot of people that that's true that have them and don't. That's true. That's true. And then they that's why well, I'm so busy because they've that's been calling me. That's why we're here. We're yeah. here to teach you how to do this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so. But don't follow soldering instructions for me. When you watch me, do not do what I do. I am not the best solderer. Oh. Well, I, I did some of the yeah. on that board work, so yeah. um, I wouldn't say like I'm I'm the best, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, no. It, with a little bit of practice, anybody can do it. Yes, it, soldering is a, a a little art, and once you, the more you do it, I've been I've been getting better and better at it. But I don't want to make a soldering video because it is such a skill like welding. That oh, I can show you, you that too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you do it right or you, you don't do it right. Well, yeah, I Just, honestly I would I would probably pick. Uh, uh, if I was going to show welding, I would probably have referred to an expert or something on yeah. that. Because it's not something that I do every day. No. I, I, I can weld. I've welded. But I can... It's not going to be... Yeah, it's not no, you, pretty. No. <laughs> a welder's going to look at that and be like, oh my god, what did you do? <laughs> right. I can stick a couple things together, but it's not going to be pretty. Yeah, it's, it's going to hold, put it that way. Yeah. yeah it's not going to be no. that... that perfect little stack of nickels or dimes look to it yeah it, it's it's gonna hold no for that i mean that's 
it's it's just a difference of a hobby a hobbyist um doing it you know yeah uh every once in a while versus you know if you're really getting into pinball you you got to learn how to yes. solder you got to learn how to crimp connectors you know if you're going to have more than a, a few games it's uh it's yeah. mandatory it's, so. yes you need to oops i think i i think my my beer crack went to over your went to the red line there oh yeah oh, i'll well. have to turn that down See how much CPU I use compared to Ryan? I'm at 60%. Mm. And Ryan's like at 4. Yeah, because he has a supercomputer. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, if I run two computers, I'll, we'll, we'll be going like this. Because mm. I'll be maxed out totally. Well, is that it then? Yeah, that's it. All right. We're going to kick it. So, if anybody's got any last minute questions, I know there's only four of you left out there. If you got anything, please shoot it right now. Otherwise, I'm going to hit the end stream button, and we will see you next Sunday. We will probably be putting these back together. And, and yes, Jeremy, have a great night. Check out Pinball Mayhem on YouTube. See you, Jeremy. Thanks for hanging with us. Yes, Jeremy. It's always a pleasure chatting with you and watching you do your thing. And Jeremy's other channel, um, Too Many Hobbies. That is a interesting one that Jeremy does his other stuff that's not pinball related all of your personal stuff and that's that is another enjoyable channel right now he's been doing a lot of um oh i forgot that weird game you're playing with uh you're hauling stuff in through the mountains or whatever that game is interesting awesome yeah all right everybody um take care and we will see you next week sunday you and i will be putting these score reels back together Hopefully, I'll have most of them done, but most likely not. SnowRunner, that's it. Um, we will do our thing. We'll probably put some of them together, and then we'll probably go to one of the steppers and head and rebuild that. But anyways, everybody, um, take care, and um, we'll see you later. See ya.